Cat Zero is joining me again today. He is the co-founder of Neo7 Bioscience, innovators of personalized peptide designs. Dr. Cat Zero, I labeled this how urine is basically being used to treat cancer because this beginning step is taking samples of people's blood and urine. Hang on one second. I just had a kid. Yes, that's yes. right. Go ahead, Dr. C. Yeah, tell us how, how is the how does the extraction process work first, and why? Why do you yeah. why are you looking at that? Yeah, the extraction process is pretty simple, right? Um, so we're looking at blood and urine because all of the elements that are needed to uh, analyze uh, all the proteins uh, that are relation to you know normal function and and disease function are found in the blood and the urine. We also look at tumor tissue in the cases of cancer too, but you know, you don't always have access to that tissue. So, but we don't really, it, it just gives added information, but it's, it's not going to give us any more than what the blood and the urine uh, gives us. So we capture, uh, we capture all of the molecular data points. So like, in other words, that blood and that urine is rich in what we call bio data. And that bio data gives us the clues uh, to be able to come up with the uh, individualized or personalized type of strategy to help the person fight their own disease process. And that's in cancer and, and other type of non-cancer uh, like autoimmune neurodegenerative uh, chronic infections, et cetera. Can you explain what you believe is ultimately at the root of cancer such that your particular way of attacking it makes the most sense? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, as well as I do, Allison, that uh, there are so many things that hit us sideways uh, in our everyday existence, right? We have environmental factors, we have food, we have, you know, we have related stressors. I mean, these different things hit, you know, hit us and hit our bodies, hit our, hit our brains, hit, you know, hit the whole fabric of our being. And, and the thing is, is that every person has his own, every person has their own signature in being able to uh, uh, orchestrate the right uh, harmony in, in the body. Right. So, I mean, it's like uh, to be able to, to, to be able to, you know, focus in on the individualized or personalized movement is very smart because of the fact that people, people's bodies of, uh, are, you know, their functional platforms are different. Uh, they handle things differently that, you know, some people are more susceptible to certain type of exposures and others are not. Some people are blessed with having a stronger immunity. Some are, some don't. Uh, so having the individualized expressions right in front of us, it's no longer behind the curtain. It's actually revealed and it helps us not to fly blind. And we're, you know, we're flying by, by visual movement rather than, you know, we know what's going on rather than uh, uh, just, um, you know, taking pop shots at things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm curious, before we go more into the treatment, I've had people like Dr. Thomas Seafried on, for instance, who wrote uh, Treating Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. So there's a lot out there in say that particular field of study about just starving cancer cells of sugar and reducing sugar intake and that kind of thing. Um, does your treatment look at lifestyle factors? In other words, do you, do you say, okay, look, these things should also change and then we're going to kind of supercharge your immune system on top of it? Or you kind of stay out of that and say, here, here's, here's a treatment that's uh, non-toxic, I guess, in the sense of like chemo and radiation, but it doesn't, I mean, does it get to the root cause? I guess my big question is, does it get to those root causes that we talk about if say you do believe cancer is a metabolic disease or is it still just treating symptoms? No, it, it's, uh, it's not a symptom-based type of a program. It, uh, it is really focused in on what <clears throat> is happening uh, with the, in, with the person. So, so in other words, the, all these factors that we mentioned, these lifestyle factors and adjustments, you know, the, the, the data gives us the clues. So the data doesn't, it, it gives us a, the real picture. So like, in other words, if we look at it and we want to find root causes, the best way to find a root cause is to know how the body is responding to the certain, you know, certain type of, uh, hits that it's experiencing. And, you know, in disease, we, we focus in and on that, looking at how we're going to enhance the body's ability to signal better. 
because a lot of the times what winds up happening is the body's uh, normal functional proteins that keep things in balance and keep things moving healthy, they're usually skewed. They wind up becoming uh, fa you know, faulty in expression and very, I would say, uh, not the integrity of the proteins really are compromised, right? So it's important for you to know those things going in. So uh, this is this by, this goes around that symptom-based approach. So like the, the one size fits all the stratified version of medicine and the symptom-based movement uh, is something that really doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't help people get healthy. It really doesn't. All right, I'm going to have you define a couple terms in a second. Don't forget, everybody, though, if you're somebody who's interested in converting your IRA or 401k into precious metals or you're interested in just learning more about protecting your savings with gold and silver, text Allison, A-L-I-S-O-N, to 989898. You will get your free no-obligation info kit on gold from Birch Gold. They have been in business over two decades. They have an A-plus rating with Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers, and will give you all the information you need if if you're somebody, again, who's been thinking about diversifying your savings, this is uh, one thing you can do. Like us, we are hopefully going to be diversifying our savings into chickens who are laying eggs. We found our first egg yesterday. We are so excited about that. We have officially chickens laying eggs. So that is amazing. But uh, if you're also looking at other ways like gold and silver, this is a great way to support the show, an easy way to find out if this is right for you. And it's just a simple text message, A-L-I-S-O-N, Allison with one L, to 989898. So thanks to Birch Gold for that sponsorship. Okay, so since we're talking, some of the terms I think are maybe a little bit um, above, I would say at least my head, maybe other people. So <laughs> let's just yes. let's define the term. Okay, so what is a peptide design? What is uh, a peptide? Yeah, a peptide is a building block of a protein, very simply. Uh, there are many peptides in the body that are responsible for building uh, the proteins of our body. So in your body, you have many, many proteins that are responsible for keeping normal integrity and function of the human system, right? So, so these peptides are the building elements of those proteins, very simply. Mm -hmm. Okay. And going over to, um, there's a bunch of questions actually on local. So we're going to pull those up in a second. I meant to say earlier, you can send me real mail to PO box 3355 Donnellan, Florida, 34432. Love getting the letters. I got some seeds. I get some loose pocket chains, some large donations for the show, some tips and encouragement. So love all the mail. PO box 3355 Donnellan, Florida, 34432. Here on your website, neo7bioscience.com, you have a bunch of different pieces that are, I guess, outside the circle of individualized targeted immunotherapy. And that's what you all offer, which includes right. things like whole food diet, exercise, uh, hyperbaric oxygen, stuff like that. When we hear the term immunotherapy, I hear that quite a bit in cancer treatment nowadays, but it doesn't sound the same as what you're doing. It sounds still like a, um, a generic product that everybody gets. It doesn't sound like a that's, personalized yeah. product. Can you that's differentiate right. between immunotherapy conventionally used versus what you're talking about? Absolutely. So when you're talking about conventional immunotherapy, you're normally talking about a monoclonal type antibody therapy that is matched to one target and it's not specific to the patient. It's just a conventional standard in oncology. And uh, it's a biological substance that's not, uh, it's not matched to patient targets, right? So it's totally different. The individualized immunotherapy approach in, in cancer uh, is matched specifically to the patient target using those peptides, not using antibodies. And a lot of the times, the difference there is that antibodies have a lot of off-target reactions where individualized peptide to the targets to the patient uh, won't have those off-target reactions. So that's the, that's the primary difference. Okay. And... Have you have you differentiated success rates for those two, the conventional one you just described versus the one you do? Like what? Yeah. How how do you measure success? Well, the the measurement of the success, as you know, we're we're not doing any NIH any clinical trial like that. So a lot of these are private practice sponsored trials that are under IRB, which is like uh, IRB is an institution. A review board that individual practices set up so that they can administer experimental treatments to patients that 
want their own individualized treatments, right? So <clears throat> we measure the success by, you know, the results that we're getting with those patients. And we then uh, analyze the data to see, you know, the outcome. So currently what we've got in generation two, like generation one, when we were just starting, when I was in clinical practice, our efficacy rate was close to 60% in incurable cancer, for instance, that those were the cancers that uh, failed all treatment and w didn't have any other treatment. And these patients were diagnosed. They only had maybe six months and less to leave, live or even less than that. And they wind up living 10 plus years past their, uh, past their prognosis. Right. So they, and, and these patients, many of these patients are still alive today, 14 plus years after now our generation, our new generation, which is Neo7 Bioscience, we're pushing closer to a 75% objective response rate, which means that these patients have better quality of life. They have life extension. Uh, they have revitalization. Uh, they respond very well to the treatments. And, and, and it's just, it, you know, it's a, it's a night and day type of thing because their body systems are accepting of what's happening because of the fact that it's personalized to their molecular expression. And uh, that, that, very significant. I mean, it's a significant change. Whereas, you know, in conventional treatments, the, the percentages are, are not that, you know, high. They're pretty they're pretty small on the, on the, like with chemotherapy, you're lucky if you're between a five and 8% uh, efficacy there. And I'm, I'm probably being generous to be quite honest with you. Does with that mean, yeah. I've never actually asked a doctor this, but like, I, I've always been curious then, does that mean that the person likely would have, say they survive? Okay. They, they may get through chemo and they survive. Does that mean they probably would have survived without chemo? If it's very, only very possible, very possible that they, so you know how many, you know how many of the people decide that they're not going to do chemotherapy, that they really, you know, they take the strong position that they're going to change their life, you know, life uh, focus, their life habits, their diet, their exercise, their stress management, the better nutrients coming in, making sure that they have a right, you know, uh, balance. The, these these are the people that, you know, they've gone, they said, look, I'm, we're not, I'm not doing chemotherapy. I've decided I'm not doing it. And, and, uh, and, and based on that very positive, proactive movement in their health, uh, they wind up beating their diagnosis, right? And so now when we talk about putting in personalized therapeutics uh, along with that, you, you know, you're powering yourself up greater than 50% when you should make that decision that you're not going to uh, go the route of standard of care that, you know, under the chemotherapy and radiation. And I'm, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not saying that these things cannot be integrated and blended and, you know, and, and the personalizations mixed together with it, because there are a lot of people that make those decisions too. But when you got when you have control over your health, when you actually decide to put yourself at the helm and you have that support around you, you know, you're pushing yourself in the greater, higher percentages of recovery and and resilience. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, what does the what does the treatment do for the body's ability to cure itself, I guess, ultimately? It works with that natural, with that natural movement, with those molecular signals. So when you're when you're looking at how these underlying uh, uh, mechanisms or switches, if you will, are behaving, and you know, let's say for instance, you've you've done everything that you possibly could to to you you know, you've done everything naturally that you could, you've done everything that you know that you can do, but yet you still hit a wall, right? There's still that resistance. Well, that's where this type of personalized uh, uh, molecular <clears throat> approach works because then you're seeing the points of resistance that you would never know. It's kind of like flying in the clouds. If you're just kind of like taking shots at different things and saying, okay, I'm, I've done this, I've done that, I've taken these pop shots, they, they all might be good things to do, but they really didn't fully get you to the point where you're no evidence of disease or you feel, you know, getting to that beyond you're beyond disease and you're into that resilience better health right so okay well, yeah. let me ask you this follow-up question for magpie again alisonmorrow.locals.com thanks everybody on the editorial board 
Maghi asks, uh, do you believe cancer is genetic or a disease of cells no longer functioning properly? Like with age, I'm old enough to remember when cancer was still considered an old age disease. That's a great question. Um, you know, it is, an, it is a disease of aging. <clears throat> so we can rightfully say that, that uh, from a progression of age standpoint, that cancer and aging have uh, the cancer, the cancer uh, evolution and the aging process and the hallmarks are, you know, they, they are uniquely the same, but maybe have different type of, of molecular relationships, but they have similar patterns. So, yes, I would say that it is related to an aging process. And then the other thing is, is whether or not it's, um, you know, firmly genetic. It, I would say that it's not just solely genetic. Um, I believe that it, it is a combination of having the, you know, because there are some people that th have no germline presence of cancer and some do. So like in other words, they have a, they have an inheritance pattern from, you know, the familial line, but, and, and just because they have an inheritance pattern from the familial line doesn't mean that they'll have an active case of cancer. So there's a lot, a lot of family members that have this type of cancer in the family, but yet, you know, someone in, you know, someone in the family does never gets that cancer, right? I, we just recently had some, uh, <clears throat> a patient that had, the mother had BRCA2 and the daughter had BRCA2 and, and the other daughter was negative for BRCA2, right? So it's kind of like, well, how does that happen? So if you look at it from the standpoint of, if you were to just say that cancer is solely genetic, it would be kind of misleading because it's not solely genetic. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a combination of the genetic and the, you know, extrinsic influences that can, that can influence the genetics. And, and if the, if the genetics are influenced in a negative fashion, then of course the body can be making changes where it affects uh, the proper uh, genetic relationship and function. Also, I hope everybody is diligently signing up for the wine club. The Allison wine club has been around for a few years as a uh, sponsor or Bonner wine as a sponsor where you can just go pick your wines. We've switched it now to a wine club. So you get amazing wines every three months. These are remote regions of the world. Some from over um, between six and 9,000 feet, hand harvested grapes, winemaking traditions from generations of family winemakers, the kind of wines that were selected really for the stuff I like, which is clean, uh, no dyes or additives and all comes with a really amazing story and it's just great wine. So you will always have a bottle to take as a gift to an awkward cocktail party or to a friend that you unfriended over the last few years because of what you're watching on the news, whatever the case may be, you will have a great uh, bottle of wine and a great story. It helps support the show. If you're somebody who already drinks wine, you want something that's cleaner, tastes better, comes with really great um, practices and traditions and great story along with it and also supports the show. Go to allisonwinepromo.com. Hope to see you over there.